Lecture 11, Damped Mass Spring Systems and Resonance, Harmonic Motion and Resonance. Okay, mass spring damper system, going back to a pretty simple case, one dimension and a mass on a spring subject to a linear damping force, which is okay, it's a decent approximation if we're at small enough sizes or speeds. We've got the net force is given by the spring force, negative kx, where x is the displacement from equilibrium, minus b times v, b would be the damping constant, v the velocity, x is the mass's displacement, k is the spring constant. Newton's second law says the net force is mass times acceleration. Writing everything in terms of time derivatives of the displacement, we can come up with this differential equation. This is a linear homogeneous second order DE. For those of you in math 2Z03, which should be um, everyone, unless, you, unless you've already finished that, and then you're an, uh, you know this even more, you learned that solving this differential equation, you can substitute an assumed form of solution, x equals e to the rt, because it's linear with constant coefficients, and then come up with your solutions for the uh, possible values of r that make this work. Then, uh, depending on the sign of this term under the root, we have three different cases. If b squared is bigger than 4mk, then we have two real roots. So the general solution is uh, is of this exponential form, where both the both the coefficients of the t are real. We'll call them r plus and r minus there. If this is a zero, then we have uh, we have one repeated root, and we'd have to use uh, reduction of order to find the second solution, which basically just means you multiply the first one by uh, t. And if r if this thing is imaginary, so we have a, a negative number under the root, and the root gives us an imaginary number, then we have a complex conjugate pair of roots, r plus and r minus, which, uh, when we substitute back in, give us complex exponents. If we form new solutions by taking a linear combination of these two, then you can rewrite using Euler's identity as a cosine and sine term. You can also use the same linear combination pair on the, on the real solutions up here, and we'll do that in the next section, to get, uh, to get cos and sine hyperbolic solutions. Okay, so the, the frequency of these cos and sine terms are, uh, are given by this root of k over m minus b squared over 4m squared, and this is the damped natural frequency. Uh, it's okay if that was a, a little bit fast. You, you do this in Math 2Z03, uh, maybe about halfway through the course usually. So if you haven't gotten there yet, then this is just uh, consider this a crash course through differential equation solving, uh, second order linear differential equation solving with constant coefficients for the homogeneous case. Crash course of some of the stuff you're going to be doing in 2Z03. Anyway, in this course, we have the benefit of Maple and Flex PDE so we can uh, use computers to get the solutions for us. First, let's uh, let's substitute in an example problem of this analytically to see what form of solutions we're looking for. So this is stuff that you can do in 2Z03. You take the initial position and the initial velocity, assuming we release it. And we're going to try uh, for the three different cases. The first case where we've got a lot of, uh, where we've got real roots, we call overdamped. This is if damping is relatively large. If the damping is in this moderate range where the root gives us a, a zero, it's called critically damped. And if we've got low damping so that we have imaginary roots and sine and cosine oscillations, it's called an underdamped case. So the which solution you get physically depends on how strong your damping is compared to the mass times the spring constant. Substituting in the overdamped case, we can come up with uh, we can come up with what the, the roots are. If we, if we take the roots we found last time and substitute those into the differential equation for this set of initial conditions now, then we can solve for the constants. And when we substitute back, we can find the equation of motion, which is, uh, is written like this. If you like, you can rearrange it. So basically, it's just con a sum of constants times these exponentials, but we just found the specific values of them. You can rearrange this into cinch and cosh, as explained. Uh, usually, maple would be a lot, a lot faster than substituting in and doing these calculations by hand like this. But if you're interested and want to really hone your 2Z03 skills, this could be an, an example of a time to practice for that. If we've got critically damped 
uh, if we got a critically damped mass spring situation, so the damping is just the right kind to give us this product of an exponential and the linear term that we got from reduction of order, then applying our, our initial conditions gives us this set of solutions. So this, this solution. And for the underdamped case, if B squared is less than 4MK, in this particular case, we end up with X at T is this exponentially decaying cos and sine term. All right, so the example problem that's more representative of what we would do in this course is suppose we know this is the mass and the spring constant and we have these uh, possible damping coefficients for over critically and under damped respectively. Write down the differential equations of motion for releasing the mass from x naught equals one and solve them in maple. So a hint is to check out dsolve if uh, if you're not sure which function to use for that, verify that the solutions match the form of the analytical solutions above and plot the motion and describe what happens in each damping case. This is more representative of a 2P04 problem. All right, the solution, uh, first of all, the DE writing part is what we had earlier. That's that. In Maple, you would write the system as follows. So restart at the beginning to clear the variables, set up your constants, and we're not setting up B because that's going to be different. So we're going to substitute that in. The ODE is M X double dot. So the second diff with respect to T plus B X dot plus K X is equal to zero. Our initial conditions ICs are X at zero is X naught and the derivative of X at zero is zero. That's how you specify a first derivative initial condition. So we're going to call overdamped the solution of substituting B equals four into the ODE and the ICs and then desolve that. We're going to call critically damped the solution of substituting B equals two into the ODE and the ICs and assign that. And substituting B equals one, we're going to call that solution underdamped. Assigning all of those we can show that, that it worked on the next line of maple by checking out what our solutions were. So the overdamped, critically damped, and underdamped solutions using this assign and desolve syntax here uh, are, are as follows. Notice the overdamped has real exponentials. The critically damped is an exponential multiplied by this linear term, and the underdamped is decaying exponentials modulating sine and cosine terms as promised. Note that by using by using this assign command in dsolve, we've left x untouched. So x doesn't change, and that's what allows us to solve one and then the then the next one. If we just if we didn't replace x and then try to assign x after the first one, the the next dsolves may not work correctly. Plot the solutions. Let's try plotting these these three now that we've assigned them over critically and underdamped. Looking like that. To analyze the motion a little bit, it looks like the overdamped sort of slowly returns to the equilibrium position of zero. The underdamped crosses the equilibrium point, maybe oscillates a bit. And the critically damped looks like it gets, it doesn't actually cross. It looks like it gets close to the equilibrium position relatively fast. Maybe it's the fastest one without crossing. Let's find out by repeating around critical damping with just slightly more and slightly less damping to see what happens. Modifying the numbers from the last problem, you can just change the B's in the equation and rerun it. If you look closely or maybe zoom in by changing your, uh, your vertical range, here I've changed to uh, negative 0 0.01 to positive 0 0.01, and you can see the, the underdamped case does dip a little bit below the axis. It looks like the critically damped doesn't touch the axis at all, and the overdamped similarly doesn't touch the axis, but gets there slower than the critically damped. So critically damping is the fastest you can get to the equilibrium position if it's absolutely critical that you never pass the equilibrium position. If you care about getting back to the equilibrium to like within maybe 99% of the equilibrium position as fast as possible, but you can pass it a little bit, then maybe slightly underdamped would be better for certain applications. Damping ratio. So continuing on with the underdamped case we've been talking about, we're going to do what, uh, what a common way to rewrite this differential equation is. And instead of using mass, damping constant, and spring constant, we're going to rewrite it in terms of the resonant frequency or the natural frequency given by root of k over m. 
omega naught, and something new called the damping ratio shown by Greek letter zeta. So that's the goal. We're going to try and rewrite the DE in terms of that and then plot it for damping ratios of a quarter, an eighth, and a sixteenth. Then compare it with a cosine at the natural frequency. Okay, so rewriting the differential equation by dividing it all by m, you can make some substitutions and find out that uh, that b, since b solving this thing is zeta times 2 root mk, dividing the m inside that, oh, that's the natural frequency. So there we go. Beta over, uh, b over m is 2 zeta omega naught, and now we've got the differential equation written in terms of just two variables, one of which is the frequency, which is useful to know to characterize how the system is behaving in time. The other one is the damping ratio, and that's why the damping ratio is a popular term to talk about for these mass spring damper systems. Okay, replacing the differential equation in Maple with this new one, we can plot the solution. So the solutions for the different zetas using the, the legend function here tell us that as we start to decrease the damping ratio, we get less and less damping. So the solutions decay a little bit slower. Comparing with in blue, the cosine, you can see that the solutions are basically uh, they're, they're sinusoidal, but they're decaying away at this exponential term in front, e to the negative t over 16. Modulating the cosine would give you exactly this zeta equals 1 over 16 term there. Higher damping ratios make the oscillations decay faster and shift their frequency down. The motion decays according to the damping ratio times the natural frequency, as you can see by what I plotted here.